talk, shop, pop, movies. Ahoy there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile. And if you're a convicted cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop, open that is, movies, and physical media. Today, I'm not doing any of those things. <laughs> well, there'll be some talking involved. But there won't be any uh, shopping or popping. Uh, but this is technically physical media, I suppose. It's kind of in that gray area. But I'm going to share with you not any movies or anything. Something that's actually quite dear to me. Something I've had for over 30 years in some cases because I'm an old man. I'm going to show you my first collection. So this was before the Blu-rays before the DVDs even existed, the late 20th century, or as I like to call it, the 90s. The early to mid 90s, at least, I'd say. This was my obsession. This is the thing I did. You may have gathered that I like superheroes and comic book things from other videos I have done. I had a comic book collection. Wasn't a huge reader, but I would read them. And I loved collecting action figures. But even before I really started collecting action figures, this was my jam. I collected Marvel Universe trading cards. So I'm just going to give you a quick run through of my Marvel trading card collection. So here we go. All right. So this is where it all began. I'm not going to go through literally every card in here or anything ridiculous like that. I don't have a better way to shoot it than this. So I'm sorry if it's a little uh, nauseating. But yeah, this is the 1990 series of uh, Marvel Universe trading cards. So yeah, you know, you got the big three on top there. So this is the style they had. I love these things. So this is the full series of cards. This is what the back look like. These are funny because they're almost like baseball cards. So they got like the guy's height and weight and has like their battles fought and win loss percentage, kind of like baseball stats. So I thought that was funny. As an adult, you know, that's funny to have. So it shows a little origin story and fun facts about each character. So, you know, if I know something about a superhero, 90% chance it came from a card like this. <laughs> so uh, this is why I've known essentially every Marvel character for my entire life. So when they come out with a uh, random movie of a character no one's heard of or uh, something of that nature... Take uh, Shang-Chi, for example. You know, I've had, you know, Shang-Chi trading cards in the past, so I know of him. And there's everyone's favorite guy right now, Moon Knight. So I've known Moon Knight since I was four or five years old. But yeah, I just like the look of these. It's Colossus. He's always been one of my favorite. Doctor Strange. Yeah, so this is the 1990 cards. They had rookie cards, too, which I always thought that was kind of funny. Ghost Rider was a, was a rookie at this time, so that's how old these cards are. <laughs> It has, like, you know, famous battles, like uh, Fantastic Four versus Doctor Doom. That was one of the first cards I ever got was that card, actually. Anything with Hulk was always my favorite. So, you know, Thing versus Hulk. But, yeah, you get the, the most valuable comics as opposed to the MVP cards. So I just thought that was clever. The original Avengers comic. The first appearance of Punisher. First appearance of Spider-Man. Thor. The first X-Men, giant size X-Men. This is when they... Uh, Wolverine and Colossus and Storm and all those got uh, joined the team. That's the first appearance of Wolverine and the Hulk there. That Wolverine miniseries. I actually found that at a former job. That whole series, I ended up selling it <laughs> for substantial profit because I paid like a dollar for it. But yeah, that's the first issue of Avengers that had Captain America in it. He was not in the first few issues. FYI. So we're skipping a couple of years here. Uh, this is the 1992 X-Men series. This is when X-Men was, the, you know, the shit, essentially, with all the Jim Lee art. This is one of, if not my favorite card series. I think 1992 is my favorite year because they had this, and then the 1992 Marvel Universe cards, which I'll show a little bit of soon, were my favorite of that brand. But yeah, you get all the classic mutant characters here. And I like the backs. I like when they had power rankings like this, where it showed how strong and smart and fast all the different characters were with various graphs. Yeah, I always love that. 
And my boy Colossus. I always loved him the most for some reason. Yeah, some good characters. Some of which have been in many a movie. Some of which you've never seen in anything. You got Juggernaut, the Sentinels, Apocalypse, Mojo. I always loved Mojo. Sabretooth, classic guys. On to another 1992 series of cards, which is also my favorite series of these, the Marvel Masterpieces. So every single one of these was painted by Joe Jusco, I believe is his name. I love the blob. I always love that card. So yeah, each one of these, it's like a legit painting scaled down to trading card size. I think they're all in alphabetical order in this one. So yeah, Daredevil, more Colossus. Good old Cap, the leader. There's Kang, the uh, villain that debuted in the uh, Loki show, for anyone who uh, watched that. That's what he's hopefully going to look like at some point. Uh, cool characters. So yeah, speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, this is Major Victory. This is a lame as hell name of a character. But he was like the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy I knew growing up. So when the movie came out, I... Honestly, didn't really know any of those characters, so I thought that was kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Best film of the year right there, Morbius. So just so you can see the difference, this is a 1993 Marvel Masterpieces. So these are all different artists. You can tell, like, some have this kind of style. Like, the Hulk and Wolverine ones look very similar. These are gorgeous. He's probably my favorite artist. This one is Joe Jusco, just like that entire first series was. So yeah, these are cool. I like that it's varying art, but those Joe Jesco's are so consistent and gorgeous. Remember, anyone else remember the 2099 Marvel Universe? That lasted. There's Morbius again. Can't get rid of that asshole. There's U.S. Agent from the uh, Bucky and Falcon show. So if anyone wants to know what he looked like in the comics who's never seen him, there you go. <laughs> the show did a damn good job of it. At, by the end of it. And there's Blade and Thanos. Better Ray Bill. Hopefully he shows up in the new Thor movie. And uh, there's Vulture 2099. All right. Going back in time again here. This is the 1991 Marvel Universe series. These aren't even in a binder, technically. They're just sitting in here. <laughs> but, yep, I got the whole thing here. Let me... Flip forward a little bit with my other hand since it's a little less awkward. Skip pages and show you guys. I love that Wolverine card. I like the artwork on these a lot too. There's Hulk. I think this is officially the first uh, Professor Hulk. So you can see his statistics here. Where he's almost as smart as he is strong. So when I was a kid, Professor Hulk was the thing. Not the thing, the character, but like, you know, the main hulk so i was ecstatic to see professor hulk finally in a movie even though a lot of people kind of bitched and moaned about how he was in endgame i loved it i've been waiting you know 30 odd years of my life to watch him like that the artwork on this series is definitely more interesting than the 1990s i prefer these but i prefer the 92s to these and they uh, x nade the uh, baseball card theme and just gave the characters statistics starting on this one so you can see oh you know so if you want to know how strong and smart and fast uh, Thanos is that gives you an idea <laughs> this is the shit I had memorized as a child <laughs> all right so I sort of skipped a year here because of this binder setup this is the 93 Marvel universes which at the time I wasn't a huge fan of but I like them a lot more now so you got Hulk and Moon Knight right next to each other these are cool because each page is one giant piece of artwork. You can see it's kind of like a puzzle that meshes together. So I like that about it. It's like an evolution of the 92 series, which I'll explain when we get there. But you got like all these galactic heroes, like Galactus, literally. Thanos, Silver Surfer. That's Drax. That's what Drax used to look like. <laughs> Nothing like the movie. So here they are. These are the 92s, which when they're next to each other in order like this, they don't really make sense. But as you can see, it's like little portals that the characters are coming out of into the literal Marvel Universe. Because there's like planets and stars and black holes in the 
backgrounds of these cards. I used to take all of these and go to the uh, cement floor of my uh, unfinished basement as a child, and you could actually line these up in a certain order, and it would make one gigantic picture if you connected the backgrounds the right way. So that was cool. And this is how the backs of these look. It's got the same kind of statistic thing going on. So there's Spider-Man, obviously. Everyone's favorite mutant for some reason, Gambit. So there's uh, Professor Hulk again. There's Major Victory, see? He's, he's my Guardians of the Galaxy. I was kind of mad he wasn't in uh, the second movie with all the other old-timey characters that uh, Sylvester Stallone had with him. That would have made my day. There's Ant-Man, Black Panther, Morbius again. Just can't get rid of that. Just no matter what, he's on every page. Moon Knight, yet again. See, I knew Moon Knight before it was cool. So. <laughs> That's the moral of this video. I'm not just showing off, you know, something I've loved as a child for 30 years. I'm just showing that I'm better than everyone at superheroes. But I'm really not at all. Colossus, I've always loved that one. But yeah, this is the 92 series. I'll skip a few pages. You got Baron Zemo and Red Skull. Iron Fist and Power Man. Sleepwalker, that was a character nobody really gave a shit about. So yeah, Daredevil and Spider-Man. See, we're going to see them together in a movie, hopefully, at some point. Here's the bad guys. Got Sabretooth. Kingpin. There's Blackheart. That's what he should look like. So if you watch the Ghost Rider movie and you're like, who's that guy? That's what he, that's what he looks like. I think I already made fun of him in a previous video. There's Ego the Living Planet from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So that's what I knew him as before he was like humanoid. Yeah, I always thought that was cool. And there's the Celestials from uh, the Eternals. Back to more X-Mini goodness. This is the 1994 Fleer Ultra Series. These are amazing. I love these cards. There's also a 95 series that's comparable to this one, but I don't believe I have that series. It's like one of the only ones I don't have. Just the artwork's just fantastic on these. They're basically Marvel masterpiece quality cards, but they're just all X-Men characters. There's the original team with their lame uniforms. And last but not least, I honestly have more cards than this, <laughs> but this is the last one that I have the full set of, so I'm going to stop with this one. This is the uh, fan favorite Marvel metal cards. They're all shiny, hence the uh, glare here. But yeah. Characters look a little wonky. I think these are all the 2099 versions. Oh no, these are the uh, Age of Apocalypse characters. So from that storyline, here's all the Avengers. Giant Man, aka Ant-Man when he's big. Thunderstrike when Thor wasn't around. And then there's Thor. There's Nebula. See, she looks pretty damn movie accurate in this picture. Give him points for that one. There's the Mandarin, what he actually looks like with his actual ten rings. Here's the, uh, some of the Fantastic Four related characters here. Super Scroll. I hope to see him in a movie. And not just the half-assed version of him like in the second Fantastic Four movie. Here's the 2099 characters. Oh yeah, 2099 Hulk. Ghost Rider with his chainsaw for some reason. Spider-Man 2099 is pretty sweet. They had him in the uh, Into the Spider-Verse movie. I thought that was cool. Oscar Isaac plays him, I believe. He's just playing everybody nowadays in the Marvel Universe, I guess. Well, before I forget, here's the power ranking system on this card. I thought these were cool, too. I love these when these came out. I think these are from 1995, if I uh, remember right. Yeah, so there's Blade, Ghost Rider. All the, all the hits. There's Strange. That was Doctor Strange for a time period. He looks weird as hell. And then there's, <laughs> speaking of weird Doctor Strange, there's Doctor Strange looking even more weird as hell on this card. And there's Scarlet Spiders, all the Spider-Man cards. So that's sort of how these are separated. Vulture when he had hair and was all young looking. So I'll end it there. I just wanted to give you a semi-brief look into my first collection. I have even more, like I said. I have some Spider-Man series that I don't have the full series of. But those are all the ones, I believe, that I have the entire set of. One of those things I don't ever want to sell. I'm not going to let my kid play with him yet because he's only four. But I have a stack about yay big of uh, duplicate cards that are kind of beat to hell. Those are his. So if he wants to look at them, he gets to play with those. 
Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. The next thing I do, I promise, will probably be more movie related. But hey, if you're a superhero or a MCU fan of any sort, it's kind of cool to see how the characters evolved over the years, I always think. So those cards I went through is why no matter how many MCU movies come out, I'm always looking forward to it. Because when I was five, six, seven years old when these cards were coming out, I didn't have any superhero movies. So you kids are spoiled nowadays and you don't even, you don't appreciate it. I had to have crap like remakes of the Avengers British TV show and the Phantom for some reason are the superhero movies I grew up with, with, with the exception of, you know, the Reeves Superman and Michael Keaton Batman movies. But being a Marvel guy, I never had that. That is what makes me so happy about movies like Doctor Strange coming out next week. And the fact that it's made by one of my favorite filmmakers, Sam Raimi, does not hurt. I'm talking too long. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Talk. Shop. Pop. Movies.